Grace and peace be multiplied unto you through Jesus Christ, our Lord. I am so excited about bringing this Sharp Points program to you tonight. Thank God for all of you who are watching tonight. I am excited on this, uh, what they call it, Friday Eve, as it were, this Thursday. We are elated to be in your home, your neighbor's house, or wherever you are. Thank God for this day. I hope and pray that you have enjoyed your Thursday and you're looking forward to this weekend. We know that the 4th of July is coming up. A lot of things are happening, but more importantly, God is in charge as we continually submit to him. Let's submit ourselves to God, resist the devil and watch him run or flee from us. An exciting thing happened today. We have our first black Amen. Supreme Court uh, Justice. Uh, we are grateful and we're thankful that uh, the first black female, I should say that, because uh, that's very, very important is, um, to say the first black female. And so we honor, amen, what God is doing throughout the world today. Listen at me very, very carefully. I just want to send a special shout out to my man, Vincent Bellamy. Shout out to uh, Cedric Wooten on uh, tonight. Uh, thank God for Curtis Bryant, all of you brothers out there, Deacon Gaston, Brother Wade, Elder White, all of you great men of God. Listen, I am so elated that we are about to come out of June, getting ready to go into July. Again, we celebrate it. Prophetess Mary Fleming and Sister Wanda Brown had a birthday and she celebrated her birthday on yesterday. Again, happy, happy birthday, Prophetess Fleming. Happy, happy birthday, Wanda Brown. But we're about to come into the month of July. And on Friday. Oh, that's right. I got to send a special shout out to Marvin Jr. That's right. Marvin Jr. Amen. Elder Marvin White's son. Birthday was on yesterday. I hope you got my text. You didn't respond back, but that's all right. Amen. I hope you got my text. Wishing you a happy birthday, Marvin Jr., the son of Elder Marvin and Iris White. Uh, yeah, Marvin White Jr. <laughs> Marvin White Jr., one year older. Amen. But, amen, as we're Coming out of June, again, all of you that are in the month of June, happy, happy birthday to all of you that uh, celebrated a birthday this month. Uh, to Renee, Nay, and her sister, amen. Yeah, Misha, Staten, we said happy birthday to y'all. But on tomorrow, tomorrow is Friday, July the 1st. Demetrius Warren's birthday is tomorrow. So we say happy, happy birthday to you, Demetrius. And Tasha Aline, her birthday is on July the 4th. So all of you July people, get ready to celebrate. We honor you, Sister Demetrius and Tasha Aline. We say happy, happy birthday in advance on tomorrow. So send a special shout out to Sister Demetrius on tomorrow. Amen for a birthday and Tasha on Monday, July the 4th. And anybody else who's celebrating a birthday in the month of July, happy birthday, happy birthday to all of you. OK, let's get ready to go in the word and let's pray and hear what the spirit is saying. Father, thank you for wisdom, knowledge and understanding. Thank you for your word tonight. We denounce the works of darkness, and we glorify you for how you're going to think through my mind, speak through my lips, a relevant word in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Don't forget phone tree. Come on, get on that phone. Hit those people up. Text them. Call them. We are holding you accountable for doing your job, making sure that people are made aware of the fact that we're here each and every Thursday on Sharp Points, a program taken from Proverbs 27 and 17. All right. Now we're talking about a new me for my new day. And this is part three of this message, a new me for my new day. And that's what we are believing God 
to stir you up about that each and every day you want to be that new person that gets what God wants you to have, that obtains what God wants you to obtain as you be that new person in the new day of the Lord. You see, the Lord has made this day possible and all glory and honor and and strength belong to him for creating another day. Saints of old, you say it this way. Another day, the Lord has kept me. He has kept me from all evil and my mind stayed on Jesus. Another day, the Lord has kept me. So here on this Thursday, we are celebrating the Lord. But again, you want to be a new you in your new day. All right. Now we reading 2 Corinthians 5, 17 said, therefore, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creature. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things are become new. So in Christ Jesus, we have become new. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in the message Bible says, now we look inside and what we see is that anyone united with the Messiah gets a fresh start, is created new. The old life is gone. A new life emerges. So those of us who are in Christ Jesus should be operating and functioning like we understand newness, like we believe for newness. We should be talking about new things and forgetting those things that are behind us and reaching for the things that are before us. There's some new things ahead. God wants us to lay hold of. In fact, we said that the word new, I'm going to give you a definition of the word new. I don't think I gave you this the last time, but I'm going to give you a definition of the word new. According to the dictionary, it means fresh, unused, untrodden, unaccustomed, unspoiled, untouched, up to date and youthful. That's powerful. That God wants us to experience the fresh God wants us to experience that that will bring our youth back, that will keep us tapping into that which has never been trodden before, untrodden territory, amen, unaccustomed territory, walking into new things, getting a life that we never had before, being somebody we never been before. That's what we're talking about. It's been said, today is a new day. And I choose to be new in it. Let me say it again. Today is a new day and I choose to be new in it. Notice the verse uh, that I just said or the quote that I just made doesn't say I feel new in it, but rather I choose to be new in it. I choose to be new. We must choose to be new. And I can't say enough about trying to get people to walk out of their feelings and walk into their choosing or their choices. Life is choice driven. We live or die by the choices we make and decisions must be made by information, by revelation, by understanding what God wants done through us and with us in the earth, not by emotions. But by revelation, man shall not live by bread alone, but we live by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. You see, it takes revelation to bring us to a place of revolution. Let me say it again. Revelation can only happen in the heart of those, amen, that really are allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to them. And God enlightens us. And as God enlightens us, it starts a revolution on the inside of us. Well, let me move on from that. Okay, 2 Corinthians 5, 17 in Amplified Classic says, Therefore, if any person is engrafted in Christ, the Messiah, he is a what? New creation. A new creature altogether. The old, previous, moral, and spiritual condition has passed away. Behold, the fresh and new has come. You see, that's how we should get the thinking that the fresh and the new belongs to us. What did I say belong to us? The fresh and the new belongs to us. 
When God brought the nation of Israel out of bondage, out of Egypt, out from under the authority and headship of Pharaoh, it wasn't for them to get the old. It was for them to walk into the new. God brought them out of Egypt, took them through the wilderness, not for them to go back because of trials and tests and trouble, but for them to go forward and walk into a land flowing with milk and honey. God wanted them to forget the old and embrace the new. And that's what he's challenging us to do, to be that new person in this new day of the Lord. This is the day of the Lord. This is the day where God is doing stuff. But the enemy wants us to focus on what he's doing. And I'm telling you, the devil is a defeated foe. Jesus spoiled principalities and powers, made a show of them openly. And now we should be embracing, reaching for the new, for the new. All right. It's been said. Watch this. If you don't like the road you are walking, start paving another one. If you don't like the world you've been walking, start paving another one. It's also been said you can't go back and change the beginning, but you can start where you are and change the ending. You see, you can change the end of your story. You can't go back and change what has happened in the past, in the beginning, but you can definitely walk in this newness of life, in this newness of spirit and begin to have a better ending. The Bible said it this way, though your beginning is small, your latter end shall greatly increase. It says better is the end of a thing than the beginning. So we should change our ending based on reaching for the new. Let's look at eight things we said <clears throat> for the new day. Eight is the number <clears throat> of what? New beginnings. So we want our new beginnings. So let's look at these eight things. Number one, we said God wants us to have a new spirit for our new day. If there's going to be a new day and every day is a brand new day, we ought to know that we need a new spirit. God gave us and made it possible for us to have a new spirit. When the scripture saying, if any man be in Christ is a new creature, he's talking about new inwardly. New in our spirit, the heart of stone has been taken out. A heart of flesh has been given to us a heart to go after God, a heart to love God, a heart to love God's people, a heart to love those who are sinners, knowing that the same God who saved us can save them the same way God delivered us. He can deliver them. Galatians six and five in the Amplified Classic says, for neither is circumcision now of any importance, nor of nor uncircumcision, but only a new cre creation, the result of a new birth and a new nature in Christ Jesus, the Messiah. <clears throat> so you and I have a new nature. We have a new heart. We're not the same person because God made us new inwardly. So it doesn't matter whether you're black or white. That's outward stuff. What matters is your inner man being changed, the heart being circumcised, the heart being circumcised. God has taken away the foreskin of our heart, gave us a brand new spirit. Hallelujah. To love him, to worship him, to serve him, to serve others. That's what God did by his power. Number two. We talked about new wine for my new day. In other words, before you got saved, you were drinking that old wine that made you cut a fool, act a fool, act stupid, act crazy, do crazy things with your life, do crazy things with your body, do crazy things to hurt others. But now you got the new wine. The Bible speaks about new wine being put in new wine skins. Hallelujah. So we have this new wine on the day of Pentecost, the new wine entered the men and women of God. And they were not drunk off natural wine. 
they were drunk off this new wine, the spiritual wine. Hallelujah. And Peter told them, these men are not drunk like you suppose, seeing it is but the third hour of the day. But this is that which was spoken of by the prophet Joel, that it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, that I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh. Your sons and your daughters shall prophesy. Your old men, they shall dream dreams. Your young men, they shall see visions. This is that new wine. Hallelujah. That we're talking about. And we need the Holy Ghost for this new day. You need to be filled with the spirit, young lady. You need to be filled with the spirit, sir. God wants us full of the Holy Ghost. Stephen was full of the Holy Ghost. Paul was full of the Holy Ghost. Peter was full of the Holy Ghost. This new wine. Hallelujah. And number three, we said a new mind for my new day. God wants us to walk with a new mind. You can, you can have a new heart, but have old thinking patterns governing your mind. In other words, a person can be saved, have a new spirit, but still got the same old ideas in his head and the old information in his mind. Well, he's not living like a new person in their new day. If we want to live like a new person and be a new me in my new day, we got to have a new mind. That's why Romans 12 and 2 speaks of being not conformed to this world, but being transformed. How? By the renewing of our mind. He used the word metamorpho, where we get our English word metamorphosis from, like changing a caterpillar to a butterfly. Why? By our new way of thinking. Let's look at it in Romans 12 and 2 in the ICB translation. It said, do not be shaped by this world. Instead, be changed within by a new way of thinking. Then you will be able to decide what God wants for you. And you will be able to know what is good and pleasing to God and what is perfect. So we got to have a what? New way of thinking. Let's look at it in the Amplified Classic. It said, do not be conformed to this world, this age, fashioned after and adapted to its external superficial customs, but be transformed, changed by the entire renewal of your mind, by its new ideas and its new attitude. What do we need? New ideas and new attitude so that you may prove for yourself what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God, even the thing which is good and acceptable and perfect in his sight for you. So we get in the word of God so that we can meditate in it day and night and have our minds renewed because when the mind changes, it changes us into the new creation for the new day. Hallelujah. Let's look at Ephesians 4, 22 through 24. Let's go to these scriptures. We didn't give them to you last time. Let's look at them this time. Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 says that you put off concerning the former conversation, the old man, which is corrupt after the deceitfulness, according to the deceitful lust and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. Okay. And that you put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. So Paul is talking to saved people and he's talking about putting off the old man and putting on the new man. How do you do that? Through thinking a different way. He said by being renewed in the spirit of your mind. Let's look at this in Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 in the message translation. It says, since then, we do not have the excuse of ignorance Everything, and I do mean everything, connected with that old way of life has to go. It's rotten through and through. The old way of life is a rotten life. The new way of life is a sacred, holy, righteous life. He said that old life is rotten through and through. Get rid of it 
and then take on an entirely new way of life, a God fashioned life, a life renewed from the inside and working itself into your conduct as God accurately reproduces his character in you. All right. Let's look at this in the Amplified Classic. It says, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24, in the Amplified Classic says, Strip yourselves of your former nature. Put off and discard your old unrenewed self. Again, he's talking to Christians. He's talking to believers, which characterize your previous manner of life and becomes corrupt through lust and desires that spring from delusion. And be constantly renewed in the spirit of your mind, having a fresh mental and spiritual attitude. That's what we want each and every day. Have a fresh spiritual and mental attitude and put on the new nature, the regenerated self created in God's image. God like in true righteousness and holiness. Again, Ephesians 4, 22 through 24 is talking about how we need to renew our minds. Now let's go to Colossians. Colossians 8, I mean, chapter 3, verses 8 through 10 says some of the same thing. Paul wrote to the saints at Ephesus and he's writing now this letter to the saints at Colossae. He said, but now you also put off all these, these things that relate to this old man, anger, wrath, malice, blasphemy, filthy communication out of your mouth. Lie not one to another, seeing that you have put off the old man with his deeds. See, we put off the old man with his deeds and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. So the new man comes from a renewal of the mind, putting on the new man every day. You got to put off the old man and put on the new man every day as you renew your mind, you're putting on the new man. All right, let's look at Colossians 3, verses 8 through 10 in the ICB translation. It says, but now put these things out of your life, anger, bad temper, doing or saying things to hurt others. See, some people still living like that, even though they say still living with anger, still living with a bad temper, still living to do things to hurt other people and using words when you talk, using evil words, rather, when you talk. Do not lie to each other. You have left your old sinful life and the things you did before. You have begun to live the new life. In your new life, you are being made new. You are becoming like the one who made you the new life uh, brings you the true knowledge of God. So we're talking about what a new me for my new day. And there's no way you can be a new person. If you don't keep renewing your mind, your mind will go back to the old way of thinking and the old attitude. If you don't keep renewing it. This is not a one time thing. It is an everyday thing. You got to renew your mind every single day. You cannot renew your mind Thursday and not renew it Friday. You cannot renew it Friday and not renew it Saturday. You cannot renew it Saturday and not renew it Sunday. Every day I have to renew my mind by giving it new ideas and keeping it with a new attitude. Look at James chapter one, verse 21. It says, wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Wait a minute. I thought I'm already saved. What is he talking about? He said the engrafted word will save your soul. I'm already saved. What is he trying to tell us? He's telling us something you got to remember. 
You have been saved. That's your spirit. You are being saved. That's your soul. And you will be saved. That's your body. Because I am spirit. I am a spirit. I have a soul and I live in the body. Man is a tripartite. He's a three parts being spirit, soul and body. This body goes back to the dust. A man's spirit and soul will spend eternity either with God or apart from God. So the soul of man is being saved right now. I'm already saved inwardly in my spirit, but I'm saving my soul, my will, my mind, my emotions. Amen. All of that is being saved through and by the word of God. All right. In Luke 419, Jesus preached, repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. That's part of what he said. He repent saying the kingdom of God is at hand. The word repent is the Greek word meta noema or noia. M-E-T-A-N-O-E-O. And it means to think differently. When a person repents, he's he, thinking differently or afterwards. It means to reconsider. This word repent means, watch this, to change one's mind or to change one's mind for the better. So when a person repent, what is he doing? He's turning around. Why? Because he's changed his way of thinking. He doesn't just turn around physically. He turns around physically because he's turned around mentally. His mind, the way he's thinking He's reconsidered the way he was going and said, I'm going the wrong way. I need to go back the other way. And he repents, come back to the top. Watch this word repent means to heartily to a man with abhorrence for one's past sins. All right. It's been said and you get this statement. You cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. Please write that down and catch it. You cannot have a positive life and a negative mind. If your thinking is negative, you're going to be negative. You're going to have a negative life. So how do I get a positive life? I get in the word of God. Let the word of God get in me. I renew my mind on a daily basis. Get the thoughts that come from God that are higher than my thoughts. Get the ways that come from God that are higher than my ways. And I renew my mind with the word of God. I meditate in the word of God like Psalms 1 tells me to do. And Joshua 1 and 8 tells me to do. Tells me to meditate in the word day and night. I'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Joshua said, if I meditate in the word day and night, I have good success. And whatever I do, it will prosper. So we need to meditate or have a renewed mind. All right. The fourth thing as I close, because I'm about out of time, is we need to understand that if we're going to have a, be a new person for your new day, you need the New Testament. See, you look at the Bible. It has the Old Testament and the New Testament. But you always look at the Old Testament from a New Testament perspective. In other words, it's been said that the Old Testament is the New Testament concealed and the New Testament is the Old Testament revealed. So in other words, any scripture that has been spoken in the Old Testament has to be looked at in light of what Christ has done. Jesus paid it all. All to him we owe. Jesus went to the cross, went to the grave, got up on the third day and said, all power is given unto him in heaven and in earth. So we understand that oftentimes the men and women who wrote and was used of God to say that certain things in the Old Testament were looking at life with the Messiah in mind. When we read the New Testament, you're looking at life knowing that the Messiah has come and done everything necessary for you to be a champion, for you to be a winner. So the New Testament, look at what the Bible said in Matthew 26, 27 and 28. 
And he took the cup, gave thanks, gave it to them, saying, drink ye all of it, for this is the, my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remissions of sin. So as a result of Christ, we're not condemned by anything we read in the Old Testament. We're not to be beating ourselves up by anything we read in the Old Testament because we should be reading it in light of the fact that I'm a new creature, that I'm a new creation in Christ, that I've been born again, that I've been washed in the blood, that my sins have been forgiven, and now I'm able to have a fresh, brand new start in the kingdom of God, that the judgment that should have fell on me because of my sins, because of my wrongdoings, it fell on him. He was wounded, Isaiah said, for our transgression, bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. And with his stripes, we were healed. We're healed through what Jesus Christ has done. We're healed spiritually, but we also heal in our physical body as we take advantage of the covenant. Let me read this last verse. It's 2 Corinthians 3, 5 and 6. It said, not that we are sufficient of ourselves to think anything as of ourselves, but our sufficiency is of God. Look at verse 6. 2 Corinthians 3 and 6 says, who also have made us able ministers of the New Testament, not of the letter, but of the spirit for the letter kill it, but the spirit giveth life. So we ought to read the word of God in light of knowing that now, as a result of Christ, the sin debt that I owe, the sin debt that you owe has been paid. Glory to God. And now you are an heir of God. You are joint heir with Christ. And you can say like the Apostle Paul said, there is therefore now no condemnation to them which are in Christ Jesus, who walk not after the flesh, but after the spirit. You have to know that, hey, I read the word of God in light of the New Testament. Hallelujah. That's why you don't worry about, amen, the new moons and the Sabbath and being circumcised. Why? That was things that people were to do under the law of Moses. But we're not under the law. We're under grace. Grace and truth came through Jesus Christ. And therefore, circumcision doesn't mean anything. Uncircumcision doesn't mean anything. But a new creature in Christ. And you got to see yourself as a new creature. New. You are new. Type that in. I am new. Don't let the devil make you feel like you're an old person. You're just a nobody trying to tell everybody about somebody. That ain't us. You are a new creature. And you should expect the new. Get ready for the new. Look for the new. A new attitude. I think even well, that, that song, even uh, what's her name? Uh, Pat LaBelle sing that song to me. I got a new attitude. Mm -hmm. Amen. But that's for the new creation in Christ. Don't be singing that now. Understand what I'm saying? I'm saying that you as a new creation in Christ, you don't. Oh, my God. There's a section in that deal with new song. It'll be a new song. But anyway, amen. As a new creation in Christ, you got to see yourself that I'm not to walk around angry, mad, bitter, fussing, upset. Every day you get up, you mad, you upset. Some getting on your nerves, some bothering you. Come on. You a new creation. Put away anger, put away wrath, and put on this new man. Put on kindness, put on love, put on joy, put on peace. My God, when you come home from work, everybody backing up. Everybody scared of you. Everybody scared to say something to you. Why? You wearing that old person. It's time to put on the new person. Put on that one when everybody glad to see you come home. Everybody happy to see you walk in the door because they know you bringing joy in. You bringing peace in. You bringing long suffering in. You bringing gentleness in. You're not bringing home strife and anger. Well, something didn't go right on the job. So now you mad at everybody. Come on. You knew 
a new you for a new day. Tomorrow is going to be a brand new day. My question is, are you going to be a brand new you? It's time out for having these new days and old folks. We got to get some new people for this new day. Are you listening at me? Hallelujah. Glory to God. And stop trying to put something old on something new. He said new. You don't put new wine in new uh, old bottles, nor do you put a new piece of cloth on old stuff. You don't take a uh, new stuff rather, and put an old piece of cloth with it. No, it takes away from it. And even so, it takes away from the person you and I were destined to be when we're walking around with anger, strife, jealousy, gossip, talking about people, running down people. No, no, no. That doesn't belong to the new person. Hallelujah. Which brings me to my fifth point that I won't be able to deal with tonight because I'm out of time. Number five is and we'll deal with this. We'll start with this next time. We got eight points in this. A new mouth for your new day. We'll talk about that next time. I got to go. I got to go. Thank you for listening tonight. 30 minutes of teaching, 30 minutes of teaching, 30 minutes of information on Thursday night. And so we're out of time. Again, we celebrate every last one of you. Thank you for watching tonight. And we appreciate all of NOLCC doing their job, watching, getting fed this word so we can live out Sunday morning. Go there. It'll be a new day. Go there as a new you. Tomorrow is going to be a new day. Walk it out as a new you. Again, shout out to all of you. I want to say this to you. If you're not having anywhere to go Sunday morning, come on, join us at NOLCC. Come on. If you can't join us physically, join us virtually. Join us right here on Facebook. We're here every Sunday morning at 1030 on Facebook and YouTube simultaneously. You can watch us. And I'm telling you, this past Sunday, God spoke so awesomely. We had a great move of God and it's going to be a great one this Sunday. How do you know, Bishop Sharp? Because God gives us a word. And where the word of a king is, there is power. So we know once we get where the word is, there's power, there's authority. Hallelujah. All right. So we're here each and every Tuesday night at 730 on this platform, Facebook Live and each and every Thursday. Excuse me, at seven o'clock to 730 during the program called Sharp Point. And Sunday morning at 10 a.m., we are back in the local assembly building Wearing our masks, washing our hands, using hand sanitizer, practicing being safe in the name of the Lord. Now, listen, I want to pray for you that are not saved. And I want to pray for you that need a touch in your body right now. We're going to lift up tonight. <clears throat> We're lifting up Jeannie Suggs, mother. Amen. Geneva. We're going to lift up uh, mother Geneva tonight. Amen. And anybody else that you know that need a touch in their body. Father. Tonight, I thank you that you are indeed a good God. And I pray for that man, that woman, that boy, that girl who's not saved tonight, that they will make a commitment, a powerful, life changing decision, not based on a feeling, but just based on a decision to live for you, to serve you till they die. And then, Father, I lift up those that are sick and need a touch in their body tonight. I pray that you would touch them from the crown of their head to the sole of their feet. I command cancer to disappear. I command COVID-19 to go back where it came from. I command every demonic thing to go back where it came from. Be healed, be whole, be set free in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. All right. Thank you. Amen. I believe that blessed somebody. Somebody got touched. Somebody got healed tonight. Also, there are several ways to give to our ministry. We're going to tell you about them real quickly, but we want you to take giving seriously. If you ever want your life to do a turnaround or to receive a turnaround, be a giver. We wrote several books, 13 powerful books, and one of these books is entitled Riding the Back of a Sore. Riding the Back of a Sore is 
a great book that we've written to help people understand the practicality of giving and do it in a way that we give willingly because God always wants it from us willingly. If it's done grudgingly or of necessity, he doesn't want it. He wants us to be a hilarious, prompt to do it giver, one who gives cheerfully. I love to give because it means what? God has given seed to me and he gives seed to the soil. And he's given me seed so that he can make all grace abound toward me so I can always have to be able to give to every good work. That's what God wants for your life. Now, listen, if you desire to sow to our ministry, here's how you do it. Go and get you a letter and write out a, 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 a write on that letter. Newness of Life Christian Center. Yeah. I'm, yeah, I know you, but on the outside of the letter, I'm talking about outside. No, 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 no. <laughs> All right, write on that letter, send it, mail it to Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462. That's what you're going to write on the outside of your envelope. <laughs> Newness of Life Christian Center, or N O L C C, P.O. Box 1462. Now, on the check or the money order, you write N O L C C. Or, yeah, capital N-O-L-C-C, okay? Mm-hmm. On the check or money. That stands for Newness of Life Christian Center. Mm-hmm. Or you can write Newness of Life Christian Center. You can write it out. Now, you can also go to your Vanco mobile app. Vanco mobile app. And type in Newness of Life Christian Center. You're going to see something that pops up look like this. And you can sow a seed of any size. That's the way you give online. Amen. And download the Vanco mobile app and sow a seed. Now, if you would like to give to my wife and I, you can do that. Go to your cash app, hit your dollar sign, and type in R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P. Cash app, hit the dollar sign, R-E-V-S-H-A-R-P. Now, some of you say, Bishop Sharp, I want to bless you, but I don't have a cash app, and I don't want to give through a cash app. Well, how do you give to me? Well, here's how you do it. You just get your envelope again, and on the outside of it, write Newness of Life Christian Center, P.O. Box 1462, Tarboro, North Carolina, zip code 27886. And on the check or the money order, you just write down my name, Van Sharp, okay? And I know that's for me. Otherwise, it's going straight to ministry, okay? So you write it, Van Sharp, write a check or money out to me. And mail it to that address, okay? And we would appreciate it, and we know God would give you back a return. Thank you for listening tonight. Be that new person for your new day. Today is Bishop Blaylock's birthday. June the 30th. Oh my goodness, I got to send a special shout out to my man, Bishop Jesse Blaylock. Oh, I got to say happy birthday to him. Oh, my God. He's my brother from another mother. That's my friend. That's my brother. I love him. No one I was thinking about him today. I thought about calling him. Amen. It always happened. I'd be thinking about people like that. <laughs> and I thought about calling him just to say hello. Didn't know today was his birthday. Happy birthday. One of the greatest pastors in Tarboro helping. Amen. Called pastor a great church in Tarboro like Newness of Life. They pastor, he pastored a great church called Word of Life International. And this man of God, I'm telling you, I love dearly. Appreciate him and his lovely wife, and uh, Gail. And uh, so happy birthday, Bishop Jesse Blaylock. I'm not even going to ask your age. I know he'll tell me, but I'm not even going to know uh, uh, say what it is. But we appreciate Bishop Jesse Blaylock. A great man of God. Happy birthday to him. All right. That is awesome. I got to, I got to talk to him. Amen. And do something for him. He's a great man of God. Listen. Also, again, amen. Happy birthday to Sister Demetrius on tomorrow. And happy birthday to Tasha Aline on Monday, July the 4th, which is on Monday. Ain't Monday, July the 4th? Yeah, 4th of July. Okay. Anyway, happy birthday to all of you June people and July people. Have a blessed, blessed night. Hope to see you all Sunday morning. Listen, come there Sunday morning. Listen at me. Many times you watch us on Facebook and YouTube, you don't hear the praise and worship. 
But I'm telling you, Pastor Reese and the praise and worship team, they're going to be ready for you Sunday morning when you walk in that door at 10 a.m. Come on and let's lift up Jesus. Let's let the fireworks of the Holy Ghost take place on Sunday morning. Amen. And bring somebody with you. This is a day of evangelism. Let's bring somebody with you to the house of God Sunday morning and let's enjoy Jesus Christ. Until then, you have a blessed, blessed Thursday night. Be blessed.